And uh, today, um, Mancolico, Rachel, and I will cooperate to finish this session. Okay, let me take a bit time to introduce ourselves. Um, Rachel is a senior uh, architecture leader in Docklot, and he is responsible for all the pro network projects in Docklot. And I am the product manager in Docklot, and uh, I'm responsible for uh, container platform in Docklot. Okay, then let's we uh, let's start. Firstly, let's take a look at the CNIs uh, currently available uh, in Kubernetes. We can categorize the, uh, these CNIs into two types: underlay CNI and overlay CNI. Um, obviously, that overlay CNI are more popular than underlay CNI. Uh, for example, the, uh, the widely used Calico and Selenium with the eBPF uh, acceleration capabilities. Compared to the underlay CNI, um, overlay CNI has a lower dependency to underlay, CNI, uh, to underlay physical network, and it's easy for use. However, in some scenario, uh, underlay CNI cannot be replaced. So next, uh, let's move to the scenario. The first scenario is about the traditional application, which is migrated from the host to the Kubernetes. Um, there are, uh, oh, sorry. Um, there are some um, typical uh, characteristics for the network of the tra traditional application. Uh, let's look at the uh, red side. Uh, we can see um, the multicast and the group cast uh, is required and the ARP is necessary. And the second part, uh, some of the application is exposed. So it's by the IP address of VM or physical server. And uh, it is isolated by the firewall uh, policy with no net through the physical network. And last, the network of these parts uh, application is isolated um, by VLAN subnets uh, for business uh, uh, for business traffic isolation. For example, um, an application has two interfaces. Uh, one is for TCP uh, traffic, and another is for the uh, UDP traffic. And sometimes the log traffic is very inhumorous, so it is uh, should be it should be um, isolated to avoid impacting uh, the business traffic. Um, when this part of application uh, is moved uh, is migrated to the uh, Kubernetes, some company may uh, uh, not want to save the cost, so they will keep the uh, same pattern. Um, as the orange network pattern. So there are two ways to uh, migrate. The first way is um, we can look at it. Um, the application is moved to the Kubernetes, uh, but without any architecture transformation. And the second way is the uh, application, which is deployed on the VM. Um, when they move to the Kubernetes, we can, oh, sorry. Uh, we can use the technology such as Um That means after the migration, uh, it's still run on the VM, but the VM is managed by the, uh, by the Kubernetes. In these two cases, um, both of the, uh, the, the network pattern will keep the same as the original. So in this case, uh, underlay will be more suitable than overlay CNI. Because it needed to uh, the, 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 to communicate with the physical network and it needs um, fixed IP for the ports and it needs VLAN subnet isolation. Okay, let's move to the second uh, scenario. It's about the communication on the side of the cluster. Um, sometimes the service uh, registry center uh, is deployed out of the cluster. Maybe it's uh, in the another cluster, and um, in this case, uh, the pod should be accessed uh, by outsider, uh, by outside. And um, additional, uh, some uh, 
middleware or database will deport a closed cluster for high availability. So the um, data synchronization across class became crucial. And um, network connect connectivity and performance is very important. Um, uh, well, of, of course, um, only CNI has solution for this scenario. Uh, for example, Calico has uh, its BGP mode and Cilium with the terminal, terminal mode. But uh, on, on the Lysian is more lightweight and easy for use in this uh, scenario. Okay, um, the last scenario is about the AI large model. Uh, Everybody knows in 2023, AI large model is very popular. So let's we look at the uh, ChatGPT 3.5 from uh, OpenAI. It has 170 billion parameters and it's utilized 10,000 GPU and 2,000 nodes. Um, uh, due to the distributing computing, it uh, needs a lot of uh, computing power. Okay, we can see the, uh, see, see, see the uh, in the middle information. Uh, the communication between compute modes has reached hundreds of GB per second, and the bandwidth uh, in data center is over 800 GB per second. Um, as we know, most AI large model is deployed in uh, Kubernetes, so the network in Kubernetes should be the bottleneck. Some uh, cloud suppliers adopted uh, RDMA technology in order to reduce uh, training time, improving the GPU utilization, of course, upload CPU, so they can save a lot of cost. Um, look back to the underlying CNI, uh, it can work with RDMA and the performance is uh, great. After talking about the scenario, we can uh, look at the uh, advantage of underlay, underlay CNI. It has a, a high performance uh, by using RDMA uh, with the uh, SRV VLAN. And uh, of course, it can reduce application migration cost with, uh, by uh, keeping, the same, uh, keeping the same traditional network pattern. And of course, it can do uh, bandwidth isolation for different business traffic. And it has a strong VLAN network isolation and a, a firewall isolation. Of course, it can communicate across cluster. Okay, then let's we look at the solution in open source. There are a lot of uh, good projects to satisfy the requirements in this scenario, but it has some problem. Um, the first problem is about uh, the communication uh, in, uh, with the underlay CNI, for example. The uh, health track for uh, MacRelan port IP cannot work uh, if we just use the uh, open source project. And the um, communication between the node port and port IP some, sometimes will be failed. Uh, and, the, and the second problem is, uh, as we know, the Kubernetes has become more and more reliable and the uh, scale became larger and larger. So uh, when there's uh, such as 1,000 or 2,000 IP was allocated at the same time, um, the IPM will face challenge. As we know, uh, uh, we, we have tested it. There's no efficient uh, IPM allocation mechanism. And the last problem is about the, uh, is the limitation of the communication between multiple uh, CNIs. As we talked about it, uh, the uh, traditional application um, migrated, migrated to the Kubernetes part may have several interfaces. So um, due to the conflicts in the looting table or misconfiguration, um, it may cause some, 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 some connection uh, issues. Okay, that's why we uh, published the project SpiderPool. The SpiderPool can run on uh, Brand Mental, VM, and Cloud, and it supports the scenarios such as uh, we talked about it, AI training and storage traffic uh, isolation, 
log, uh, tra log traffic acceleration. Of course, it can speed up the performance of Redis and uh, other middleware. And to look at the middle part, we can uh, we can saw that um, Spite Pool can work with Mark VLAN, IP VLAN, SRV, CNI, and it has a lot of features such as uh, the first one is smart interface for uh, pods, and uh, it has an efficient IPM mechanism for in the large cases. And of course, it supports dual stack, and it, it can um, work with RDMA, eBPF, and we have a new feature, it's about uh, egress gateway, uh, and the next uh, visual, we will talk about it. Talk about it. Okay, um, the next is the, about master of spread pool. We have a project, a uh, private project in 2015, and then the, the switch, and uh, it's only covered the Macquarie CNI, and then uh, we moved to 2019. It's upgrade to the project puzzle. It's covered the uh, Calico CNI and Wheeling CNI. Then uh, in 2022, we published uh, Spiteful as a GitHub, and uh, we have the first uh, release. And now we have uh, released V8.8, uh, uh, 0.8. Okay, that's um, the milestone of Spite Pool, and we talked about the uh, talk about the scenario and why we published uh, uh, why we have Spite Pool. Next, the visual we will show the architecture and uh, the features about Spite Pool. Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chu Ping. And uh, next part, uh, I, I have a quick demo. Uh, I don't worry about it because no database in Spidepool will be always running like uh, yesterday's demo. <laughs> Let's get down to the business. Uh, easy setup for Spidepool and uh, we can see just uh, several pods in the cluster. And uh, we are going to create, create two Spide IP pool with IPv4 and uh, IPv6 address. And we're going to create a uh, uh, Mac VLAN thing uh, configuration. Finally, we are going to create eight application to test. We, are go we have created the application named the server and we are going to create another application named client to test the server. Oh, the port IP and the class IP of the server. So we are going to inside the client pod and we will visit the class IP of the application server. Oh, it works. And uh, we know that the Mac VLAN cannot visit the class IP, so Spidepole in, enhances these uh, features. And uh, we are going to show the, how to visit the, uh, another service uh, by RDMA interface. It's, it's running a latency server in a port, and we will uh, wait it from another port. Oh, it works. Okay, that's a quick demo. So let's uh, move to look at the, some details. As shown in the figure, it's the architecture of SpidePool. It uh, integrates the motors, SLV network operator, and RDMA device plugin. Plug it also has components uh, such as Spider agent controller and the uh, three chaining thing, which uh, communicate with the local agent to enhance the 
capabilities of Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, and uh, ISLV. Uh, firstly, it's about the Mutils enhancement. When writing a network attachment definition for motors, uh, you need to write a JSON format chain. If this is if there is a common mistake in the chain, for example, uh, it leads to power startup failures. So, Spiderpo utilizes the CRD uh, Spider motors config to automatically generate motors network attachment definition. Uh, there are some uh, uh, advantages. Firstly, the CNI configuration with YAML format is, is less error prone. Uh, secondly, uh, in the data of generated network attachment definition, it adds chaining of SpiderPol. This helps reduce the usage complexity. Furthermore, developed values is set with best practice. It helps reduce the configuration workload. Uh, IP address uh, for IP address is, ma is managed by CRD spider I people. It in implements strong verification to avoid IP overlap between update, updating them. Uh, for under this thing, I, an IP address is required to assign to a port on any nodes, which is different from overly IPAM based pre allocated IP blocks. In the right figure, it's an example of uh, spider IP port. It includes IP address and uh, optional affinity settings. The affinity settings determines whether a port could uh, successfully allocate uh, an IP address from a specific uh, spider IP port. And uh, there are various manners to specify spider IP port for a port as listed in the slide. This is the this is a node affinity use case of spider eye people. When nodes in a cluster are deployed across the network region west and east, how can you customize the IP address of of replicas on different nodes for deployment? It could it could achieve it could achieve this by creating multiple instances of spider eye people. For example. Uh, one spider IP, spider IP port has affinity with east nodes, and another one has aff affinity with west nodes, and they have the different subnets in 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 the instance. This way, when it's creating ports, the app hand can select the right spider IP port based on the node where the port is is, is located. In, in some scenarios, ports need fixed IP. For example, the rule of the firewall needs fixed source IP in the packet to enforce security. And for example, the service of stable application could be exposed by fixed IP. In the community, I noticed that there is a common manner of fixed IP in several CNI projects. They just uh, annotate the ports with IP address. I think that is prone to IP conflict for, between application, and it's almost unable to observe the total IP usage. So, for SpiderPort, on the one hand, it uh, implements strong verification of IP overlap between uh, Spider IP port when updating, and uh, on the other hand, as showing the right diagram, a port with a limited number of IP addresses can be bound to a, a state, stateless and a stable application. Thereby, all applicants are restricted within a set of IP address. Furthermore, if the port affinity is configured, it can ensure that uh, this port is exclusively occupied by the matched application. In addition, each stateful side port and the Kubernetes virtual machine could get a persistent IP even restarting. Uh, Spider subnet 
is an experimental feature, uh, provided that uh, there is a platform department responsible for cloud native networks, while the application department is only just uh, responsible for the application. If the application clue needs to ask for help from the platform clue and figure out what IP is available for creating SpiderPole, what a, what a communication burden. So the CRD Spider Subnet aims to solve this issue. The platform clue could create a Spider Subnet, subnet with all available IP address in a subnet and then the application clue could use IP address from the sub, spider subnet to create a spider IP people object. Instead, there is no need for the application clue to create spider IP people manually at all. It's just to specify the spider, spider subnet object in the port annotation, and exclusive spider IP people object will be automatically created and bound to the application, and uh, it will dynamic, dynamically change the number of IP address or according to the application scaling events. What is, what is a long BIP? A long BIP is defined as that uh, it's an IP address that uh, remains occupied by a deleted or dysfunctional part. In underlying network, this, this can lead to IP address exhaustion, resulting in failing to create, create a new port. SpiderPole controller takes charge of reclaims long BIP. Basically, it reclaims long BIP taken by deleted ports, and uh, furthermore, it claims long BIP taken by deleting the port, where duration of the deleting state is longer than the graceful termination timeout. This is especially useful when a certain node breaks down and uh, it can ensure the IP availability for a new schedule port. Uh, as we know, analysing has various access limit limitation. Therefore, spider ha SpiderPole has made enhancements as shown in the diagram on the right, SpiderPole inserts an, an various interface for the ports to connect to the host. By setting the routing on both the port and the node, they can access each other, even the subnet is different. This enables smooth port health checks. And the SpiderPole helps improve the ability to access class IP. On the one hand, traffic to class IP can be directly forwarded to the host and uh, denied by the group proxy. On the other hand, it in introduced C group eBPF from Cilium to resolve re the class IP in the port's network namespace. This could directly forward the traffic by Mac VLAN interface and uh, provides better performance compared to the proxy manner, up to 25% improvement in latency and up to 15% improvement in throughput. Thirdly, during port start, a chaining signal for the SpiderPole use probing ARP to help detect IP conflict and the gateway reachability to ensure the available, uh, availability of port, net, of port network, network. Ooh. Mm, a pod may need multiple underlying network interface to access different uh, service in isolated subnets. On one hand, SpiderPole could insert a multiple underlying network interface through mutas. On the other hand, SpiderPole performs additional adaption work. IPAM supports the allocation of IP address from different subnets for different network phase. And uh, secondly, it tunes the routing for multiple network, network interface. As shown in the figure, as you wish, you can remain the default route of ES0 in the main table, adjust the 
the default root of net one to table 100 and it direct, directs traffic to class IP and the local host through the verse layer. Finally, when external requests are sent to a specific network interface of the port, it guarantees the data paths for request and the response are the same, avoiding packet loss. In addition to overlay narrow interface, a portal may need a secondary narrow, underlay narrow interface. For example, this, uh, it uses an underlay interface to transmit dates separately, avoiding any impact on the overlay network, like VM migration of Kubert. For example, it uses the overlay thing for TCP and uses the underlay thing for RDMA. In this scenario, verse layer is not inserted by SpiderPole. It just helps tune the routing. The default route of underlay interface net one is moved to table 100 and direct other traffic through overlay interface is layer. Therefore, any traffic is very smooth. On cloud platform, currently there are just a few, a few underleasing solutions. A Cilium and the underleasing plugin provided by cloud vendors. However, other underleasing plugins may not work due to IP and Mac issue in VPC networks. It's, it's there, um, universal underleasing and solution that can work on all public clouds. SpiderPole aims to implement these capabilities. As shown in the figure, it can create not topology based spider IP pool with valid IP address from VPC and it utilizes IP VLAN thing to solve the MAC address issue. Finally, port could succeed to communicate in the VPC networks. This approach is particularly suitable for hybrid cloud. It provides a unified underlay network solution. Currently, this solution has been verified on AWS and ACK. The major advantage of underlay thing is to integrate with RDMA. We know that RDMA offers significant performance low network latency, high network throughput of loading the CPU load. As listed in the slide, SpiderPro supports several options to operate with Rocky and uh, InfiniFan, InfiniBand. Uh, SpiderPro introduced egress policy feature for the underlay network. We can, we have created a new project named the egress gateway Co-operating with various things uh, such as uh, SpiderPole, Calico, Flannel, Weave. There are some key features shared or exclus ex exclusive EIP, multiple gateway class instance, active active gateway nodes, support for TCP and UDP, and a dual stack. Uh, the IPv4 address in the underlay network are limited. We encountered a typ typical case previously. A cluster was recovering from power outage. Pods has slow start due to various reasons, including IP allocation issue. To address this issue, we conduct an extreme test where the number of IP address in the IPAM match the number of the pods, it creates 1,000 pods together and monitor the time how long all pods get to be running. This test help us improve the efficiency and the stability of IPAM. As shown in the figure, the, post, the report recovers the uh, latest version of SpiderPole, whereabout Kubeovin, Calico, and Cilium. Well, 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 
uh, the whereabouts failed the test and other things I succeeded. As we know, IPAM of overlacing is based on pre-allocated -alloc pre IP block, so the competition for IP allocation is not very intense. In contrast, underlacing is different. It aims to ensure that the IP address can be allocated on to port on any nodes. So the competition for IP allocation is very intense. But amazing, no matter whether, whether IP quantity is restricted or not, spider performs performance the best. We conduct a network latency test on multiple CNIs. This test involves SOC, SOC perf testing between two ports located on two nodes. Calico was configured to work on the native routing and the IB table state passing pass. Well, Salient was configured to work on the native routing and all eBPF acceleration are turned on, and, but no big TCP. Spiderpo was tested with Mac VLAN data pass. In the left figure, take port IP as desti destination. Spiderpo demonstrate good latency performance. In the right figure, takes class IP as destination. Spiderpo with C group eBPF is the best. Here's another radius benchmark test against the Calico, Cilium, and the Spidepool. In the left figure, take port IP as destination. Spidepool demonstrates good throughput performance. And uh, in the right figure, take class IP as destination. Spidepool with C group EPPF is the best. So here's the QR code for feedback and the GitHub links of Spiderpool and egress. We are glad to hear from you. So any question? Thank you.